WrestleZone Radio's Nick Hausman here reminding you that all of WrestleZone's official C2E2 coverage is brought to you by Phil Singer Games. If you're a pro wrestling fan and you love card and dice games, then you are absolutely going to love Phil Singer Games. Go over to philsingergames.com, use the promo code WrestleZone to get 20% off your official Phil Singer Games starter set. It includes cards from characters like Brian Danielson, Kevin Steen, and the macho man Randy Savage. Back here at C2E2 with another great interview with one of our artists here at C2E2. This is Jill Thompson. Jill, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. No problem. Thanks for asking me to be on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Well, uh, Jill, of course, you are working with the Headlock comic. You're doing the chapter art for that. Yep. That's a that's a comic book about pro wrestling. And I know that this isn't just something you did because you got offered money to work on this. You're a pro wrestling fan. I am a huge pro wrestling fan, and I've always thought one of the best stories that you could tell about wrestling in the comics format would be how you become a professional wrestler, how you become a superstar, all the trials and tribulations that everybody has to make it, to like live their dream, to you know deal with injuries, all the travel on the road, all the funny people you meet, all the weird people that you meet. I, I think it's a, it's a you know, it's a home run. Well, and there's a lot of wrestlers that are in the comic industry now. I mean, of course, CM Punk, right? He's working on comics. Jerry Lawler drew the cover art for Headlock. He uh, does a great job. Oh, man, yeah, that Rockwell is just, it's beautiful. And, I mean, it doesn't surprise you that these kind of, like, big, burly, rough-and-tumble guys enjoy arts. They enjoy drawing comics and writing comics. Actually, it does not surprise me at all because nearly every professional wrestler that I've met and become friends with has either loved comics from when they were younger or they wanted to be a comic artist and instead of becoming a comic artist, they became the comic book hero instead. So it's like they went the other way. It's like, I think I'll become the subject matter instead of the actual guy and they still like it. And they're natural storytellers. If you're telling a really good story in the ring, you're cutting a promo, which has to be changed sometimes at the last minute and you're doing it live in front of if it's 800 people or 18,000 people, you know, it's all then what happened. And sometimes it's like, I, I mean, I know from stories that everyone said, it's oh, in the middle of the match, someone gets hurt and they whisper to the other guy like, I'm really hurt. <laughs> and then you have to figure out, well, how can I figure out how to do the things we need to do and this match, move the story forward or do whatever. It's, it's, it's like just, it's natural comic book storytelling. Yeah, and uh, you know, you brought up something on the Headlock panel the other day that we wanted to ask you about, and that was that yeah. there was almost a China comic there book. Was. Yeah, tell me a little bit about what the concept was for the China comic book, if it were to have happened. Well, I don't, uh, I wasn't the person that was writing it, okay. so um, I knew I just had wanted to be part of WWE comic because I loved wrestling. And um, at the time, Brian Polito really wanted me to work on it and I did a bunch of sample pages from, I think it was their, uh, I, th I think the whole premise of that one was I think China was gonna s like foil a kidnapping, you uh, know? That sounds like something she would do. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I, of course. course. Yeah, I mean, because the, the premise of those was that the, the WWE superstars or their characters, I can't believe I just said WWE superstar as if I worked there because I'm so conditioned to not say wrestler anymore. Yeah. Hey now, I might as well just say diva just to get it out. Sports of entertainers. <laughs> Sports entertainment. Yeah. Um, it was. It took place in a shopping mall, and um, she was kind of like a bodyguard nanny type of thing. And she was uh, foiling a plot to kidnap uh, the the kid that she she babysat for, if wow. I remember correctly. Wow, wow. So it was gonna. It was almost like uh, the end of one of those Jackie Chan movies, but with her and in a mall. Oh, so. Wow, um, wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it sounds great. It's fun. I mean, I I had a great time drawing her, but then I guess somebody up. Uh, at the top, didn't like my art as much as some of the other uh, guys, so. Yeah, well, they don't know anything, Jill. No, You're it looked really good, and I, I believe somewhere I may still have pages from that. Oh, wow, well, you should leak them online. I think fans would like I to did. see them. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, Jill, hey, I want to thank you so much again for taking the time to talk to us. Check out Jill Thompson, check out Headlocked, and we'll be here all weekend long with WrestleZone TV's coverage of C2E2. Bye.